When honeybee researchers consider to use biological weapons to fight varroa mites, that might mean things are pretty bad. I covered in this channel many times about how problematic varroa mite infestation is to honeybee health. I talked about how varroa mites compromise the immune system of honeybees. I talked about how varroa mite uh, vector many deadly viruses inside the hemolymph of honeybees. I also talked about many different creative ways honeybee researchers are trying to deal with this problem. We never know what kind of research idea is going to be the next breakthrough and we need to keep our minds open. Several laboratories around the world start to look at biological weapons as an alternative to fight varroa mites. Relax, I know it sounds bad, but believe me, it's not. Let me explain. Biological pesticides are naturally occurring microorganisms that infect pests. It is technically a biological weapon, but it's a good one, developed specifically to kill pests. Nothing else, and in this case, varroa mites. It works like this. You look for a natural enemy of varroa mites, for example, microorganisms that make them sick. Make sure this microorganism doesn't hurt honeybees, humans, or any other beneficial organisms, and then you propagate them and use them as a new treatment against varroa mite. See, I told you, it's not that bad. Biological pesticides are a kind of biological control and this subject can be very controversial. All living beings in nature are susceptible to infectious microorganisms and I get sick with viruses the same way that varroa mites might get sick with some kind of bacteria, viruses or fungi. Every organism has its own natural enemies, including varroa mites. That's where things get interesting for beekeepers. Several entomopathogenic fungi were identified as potential biological pesticides against varroa mites. For example, few tests of metarhizium showed that this fungus was capable of controlling mites, and sometimes with results comparable to commonly used chemical mite sites that we find out there. Kind of exciting when you think about it. Maybe it's a new solution coming to the market soon to help beekeepers, right? Well, not so fast. Although biopesticide seems to be an interesting alternative to heavy chemical pesticides available right now, they have generally failed to displace those traditional chemical pesticides. One of the primary reasons is that the efficacy of microbes for pest control is frequently limited by the susceptibility of the microbes to different environmental conditions like temperature, ultraviolet radiation, pH, and other factors. This susceptibility to environmental stress make them not work well in real life situations like inside a honeybee colony, for example. Dr. Jennifer Han, working at Dr. Walter Shepard's laboratory at Washington State University, is trying to increase the tolerance of microbial biopesticides so they can be more effective and perhaps replace heavy chemical pesticides in the beekeeping industry. In her article published in Nature Reports, she described a way to select fungi to resist environmental conditions without losing their capability to kill varroa mites. She first treated honeybee colonies infested with varroa mites with a known strain of metarhizium that infect varroa mites. She could confirm a significant reduction of mites using a sporulated forms of the fungus on day 5 and 7 after treatment compared with the controls. She then collect these mites from the sticky boards and isolate the fungus replicating on those mites. Here's the interesting part. She then grows the fungus in different conditions found in honeybee colonies. The ones that survive these conditions are propagated again in hotter conditions and the ones that survive the heat are isolated again, concluding one cycle of the selection process. Then she starts over and applies this new fungus that survived all these things back to hives. Waits them to kill varroa mites again, collect the dead varroa mites, isolate the fungus from the dead mites, and then she grows this isolate again in stressful conditions found inside the hive. That's a lot of work. 
Let's take a moment here to appreciate the hard work of a scientist. Dr. Hem, in the name of InsideTheHive.tv, I want to thank you for your effort to bring new discoveries to the world. Thank you very much. The progression of Dr. Hem's work can be followed in this graph representing the amount of varroa mites killed by the fungus infection. Each black arrow represents the time when the fungus treatment was introduced. The blue line represents the number of dead mites killed by the fungus and the orange line represents the control groups. After the application of the first round of selection, just a few mites got affected. However, as you can see, after a couple of rounds of the selection process, the application started to be more efficient to kill mites and also we start to show prolonged efficacy. At the end of the selection process, the researchers could see that the colonies receiving the fungus treatment were able to survive longer than the control colonies with no treatment. If this is going to work in real life situations, only time will tell. We know how hard it is to bring innovative solutions that work in the field. Unfortunately, honeybees are wild animals and we cannot control all the variables in nature. However, I am here cheering for the researchers to come up with some new innovative solutions to help honeybees and the beekeepers out there. Is this the future of varroa treatments? Is this the way to go? I would love to know your thoughts. There is always something new to learn in the scientific world of honeybee research. I learned something new today here and I hope you have as well, which is the goal of this channel. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and also supporting us on Patreon. I also want to invite you to watch this next video right here. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.